We're down here at 420 Montgomery in downtown San Francisco. This is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. And we're at the headquarters of Wells Fargo Bank. Out here protesting the banksters. And if you remember us from Occupy, and uh, we were out protesting Wells Fargo during their shareholders meeting. So uh, that's why we're out here talking about Wells Fargo and the trail of theft and fraud that they committed against the American public. So yes, we're uh, this is uh, your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan, and we're in San Francisco's financial district at 420 Montgomery Street at Wells Fargo. Uh, this is the uh, museum where they actually have the stagecoach. So it's somewhere right inside those doors. These bankers are the reason we have these wars, and they still gotta rob us blind. So we're out here protesting the trail of fraud that Wells Fargo has left across American uh, their. Their uh, depositors and people that have an account at Wells Fargo, uh, where Wells Fargo uh, fraudulently opened up credit card accounts and bank accounts by using identity theft of uh, their uh, depositors. Also, Wells Fargo recently filed uh, fired 5,000 workers. So definitely a uh, good reason to be out here if you're in San Francisco. Come down and join us at 420 Montgomery Street. So right now we just got a few people here, but we're hoping that the demonstration ramps up a little bit. A world war can be won. You want us to believe? Turn and run fast. 
Oh, when the death camp gets higher. Pardon me, sir. Sorry to make it so inconvenient for you. Yeah. Yeah, you sound better without the speaker. Working class hero is something to be. Well, you're just joining us for at 420 Montgomery. Sex to be. At Wells Fargo headquarters. And this is your live streamer, Freeman Sullivan. Working class hero. We're going to be talking about Wells Fargo here in a few minutes. Religion, sex, and TV. Think it's a 
So they closed the museum early because they uh, knew there was going to be a protest out here. Something to be. Working class hero is something to be. There's room at the top way up there. They're telling you still, but you got to be like Hillary Clinton. Plus you must learn how to smile as you kill. You want to be like the folks on Capitol Hill. The working class hero is something to be. A working class hero is something to be. A working class hero is something to be. A working class hero is something to be. You registered as a voter? You want to be a hero? Oakland. Well, just Oakland. follow me. Right. Well, looks like we got a little media out here. Wells Fargo has been under uh, fire for many different things. Um, it's estimated that uh, Wells Fargo could lose up to a third of their deposits because of all the uh, the chicanery that they've uh, been involved with. So we should have some speakers here in a couple of minutes. If you're just joining us, we're here at Wells Fargo at 420 Montgomery Street. This is where they have the original stagecoach, and uh, but they've uh, usually it closes at five, but they closed up early today. So we got a little crowd here. I guess we got about nine people, ten people. We're hoping that more people show up. We're here at Wells Fargo because they've been robbing from their own customers. It's no secret anymore. It's been exposed. And so, uh, yeah, we have uh, a number of people here that are going to be speaking to you about it. Yeah, there's no mic stand, unfortunately. Talking to Channel Two. Oh, I guess I'll walk over. They committed crimes they have to be held accountable, and we believe it's systemic crimes. It's the criminal syndicate, really, that has violated the laws. And getting away with it. How can the government allow Stump to leave with $130 million after he's done all this to, to 5,300 workers? They know what was going on, and this has been happening in this bank since 2007. A, a bank worker made a complaint in 2007, and he actually got certified by OSHA that he'd been illegally discriminated against. So the government knows what's going on here. They've been allowing it, and we're saying enough is enough. The people of this country need to demand that these bank executives be jailed and the bank be expropriated and it be a public bank, run by the public, not for profiteers, but for the people of this country. That's what we say, and that's what we believe. Jail the bankers. Well, what's my attorney general saying about it? That's a good question. Well, the former attorney general, Eric Holder, said that these big corporations are too big to nail, like Pfizer and other big banks. This bank is the fourth largest bank in the United States, and there may be a run on this bank, actually, when people find out how bad it is. So what we're saying is, take it over and make it a public bank. Because it's not just this bank, uh, it's JP Morgan, Chase, they're involved in the same kind of scams, cross-selling and this kind of thing. And the workers who work for these banks want to do a good job, but they're coerced and they're bullied. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what's happened to these workers, how they were ordered to do illegal things.
fraudulently defraud the public of millions of dollars while this guy walks away with $130 million and the government knows about it? Something is wrong in this country. The corruption that people are talking about, you know, Trump, who I don't agree with, there is a corrupt rigged system, and this is a prime example of it here at the Wells Fargo Bank. This is why we have to say enough is enough. We have to make demands that these executives and owners be jailed, and also that the bank be expropriated be run as a public bank. That's what we're saying here. They've hurt a lot of people. They've cost people their lives. People have committed suicide. They've cost businesses a uh, business. They couldn't get loans. Then they ba had bad credit, credit rating because they opened up new accounts and gave charges on them, these new accounts. I mean, it's one thing after another, and it's time to stop. Uh, they put a lot of people out of their homes this bank illegally. Millions of people lost their homes. This bank was part of the closures that took place in this country. Thank you. Set it off. <laughs> there you heard it from Steve Zelzer, one of the organizers of the demonstration. So that was why we were out here today.
Well, thank you, Vic. Thank you very much. Welcome up. I think that's a song that's appropriate today. We're here today in front of Wells Fargo to let them know that we're in jail. jail. These people are criminals. They're crooks. They stole them from the workers. They bullied and terrorized the workers to commit illegal acts. And they've also stolen from millions of American people. These people have, are thieves. And the, the CEO stuff actually got off. He left the pay of Wells Fargo with $103 million after going into congressional hearings and saying he didn't know what was going on. Here's the CEO saying he doesn't know what's going on. When they're bullying and firing 5,300 workers. Now, we have some speakers here. This is an ongoing struggle. What we're saying is not only do we want the, bank, the Wells Fargo executives jailed, but also we want the bank as appropriate. It should be a public bank. It should be run for working people in the public, not the billionaires. The billionaires who are running this bank should be in jail because they're stealing from the people. So our first speaker is Jeff Mackler. Jeff is running for President of the United States in Socialist Action Ticket. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks, Steve. You know, I'm a fan of the playwright Bertolt Brecht. How many of you have heard of Bertolt Brecht? And in his classic play, The Three Penny Opera, he has a line spoken by Mac the Knife, the number one criminal. And he says, what is the robbing of a bank to the founding of a bank? Yeah. And that's the case with Wells Fargo and literally every other bank in the country. It's legalized theft, not just Bank of America, but the entire banking system in this country. Let me give you an example. President Obama, the number one bailout artist in the history of the United States, bailed out the, fake, the failing, crisis-ridden banking and corporate system to the tune of not the 180 billion, a million, that Wells Fargo ripped off, but the bailouts to American corporations as a result of this economic crisis totaled 32 trillion with a T, the largest bailout in the world, virtually double the GDP of the entire country. They printed money and they cut back social services in order to pay off the banks. It was not the government that controls the banks of the United States, but the banks and corporations which control the government of the United States. This is a capitalist system. And the government of the United States is the enforcer for the tiny 0.0001% who control the wealth and control the corporations and make war against working people in every continent around the world. The record of the Democratic Party not to mention the Republican Party, is number one in the world in deportations, number one in the world in bailing out the rich, number one in the world in GDP, and the GDP of $19 trillion of the United States itself is a fraud. Because if you count the value of all the goods and services produced in the United States and add to that, the value of all the goods and services produced by U.S. corporations exploiting near slave labor in China, Vietnam, Indonesia, and everywhere else in the world where they can have workers for a pittance and jobs for virtually nothing. The GDP of the United States is so enormous as to be staggering. The system itself is the problem. It cannot be amended or reformed. Voting for Hillary against Trump is the equivalent of voting for Mussolini against Hitler. If you want to argue that Hitler was uh, much worse than Mussolini was the lesser evil because Hitler killed, slaughtered, genocide, uh, more Jews, that's a good argument. But both are corrupt, fascist politicians enforcing the will of capital, and that is what Hillary Clinton is. Let me tell you, in my view, Bernie Sanders was a sheep herder for the Democratic Party. Because the polls show that 56% of registered Democrats, no less, preferred socialism over capitalism. 
55% of all blacks in America, according to the Pew poll, prefer socialism over capitalism. The Democratic Party is aware that its massive corporate bailouts at the expense of working people and oppressed are causing deep divisions among the working class and deep alienation from the capitalist system. So they put Bernie in to make sure that the discontent that is rising could be channeled into the graveyard of social movements, the Democratic Party. But now, if Steve, if you will permit me, I want to have my own slight conspiracy theory. Could it be that Donald Trump is part of capitalism's conspiracy theory? I'm not saying it is, but I'll tell you, if the ruling class were to ever pick a more despicable, right-wing, reactionary, misogynist, racist candidate than Donald Trump, it had to be for a purpose, and that is to scare the living daylights out of working people back into the Democratic Party camp to vote for the so-called lesser evil Hillary Clinton, who has already sworn to begin the process of a no-fly zone, escalating the war in Syria, bringing in U.S. troops and threatening a global war. Hillary Clinton is a tried and true 30-year experience warmonger. She is responsible for the destruction and death and wars as Secretary of State and as a Senator in every country on the planet Earth. But she desperately needed the foil of a Donald Trump in order to further sheep her people into the lesser evil dead end camp of capitalist politics. If we're going to change this world, it's not going to be by voting for Hillary or Jill Stein. You read the Green Party manual for voters in Alameda Party. They basically say vote Jill Stein in the safe states and vote for uh, Hillary Clinton Thank you, and else in order to stop Donald Trump. The voter guide of the Green Party in Alameda literally calls you to vote for, at the local level, probably a dozen, if not two dozen, local Democrats. There is no way out within the framework of the Democratic Party. We need a working class fighting Labor Party in alliance with all the oppressed to advance the interests of working people. Thank you for the Workers' Solidarity Committee calling this important demonstrations. I am for the nationalization of Wells Fargo, but not under the control of the corporate government that bailed out corporations to the tune of trillions, but under the control of working people, a people's bank. That's an excellent demand. And finally, we have the president of Wells Fargo, or the executive officer, the CEO, yeah, sorry, walking you. as a free man, despite the fact that he was responsible for the ripoff of thousands or tens of thousands of working people with the false accounts of the uh, Wells Fargo and stealing money from working people. Let me tell you, the billionaires go free in, the, free in this country, while the United States incarcerates the largest number and the highest number of people on the planet Earth. Five million people are under the jurisdiction of the criminal justice system. Not one of them is a billionaire, if even a penny millionaire. The trillionaires are rewarded with trillion dollar bailouts while working people, the vast majority in prison, black and Latino, are in prison at the increasingly privatized for-profit slave labor prison industrial complex. That's the sickness of capitalism. Working people go to jail. One of out of every five black young men has been in jail during their lifetime. They're banned from voting. They are the new Jim Crow, as Michelle Alexander says. Virtually free labor for capitalist prison industrial corporate uh, complex. Thank you very much for organizing this meeting. Thank you all for coming. And let's continue the fight against corporate America. Vote for me, write in my name, Jeff Beckler, and have a spot.
for every single one of you in the White House if I did. Thank you, Jim. Jail the bankers! 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 Jail the banksters! Jail the bankers! Jail the banksters! Jail the banksters! Jail the banksters! consumer fraud affecting over 2 million depositors, and we know that the regulators only slapped Wells Fargo on the wrist with fines that were very minimal. We also, we also know that John Stuff and Kerry Tolstead have walked away with over $250 million in retirement packages, even though they were the perpetrators of the fraud. Also, over 5,000 workers were fired, even though they were forced to abide by the dictates of Stump and Tolstead. However, what is the context of this episode and what must be done? The Wells Fargo episode is integral to the specific stage of capitalism that we are living in for the past 40 years. John Bellamy Foster has called that stage monopoly financialization, whereby the big banks are driving capital Fargo. accumulation. Is Wells, is Wells Fargo really doing this shit? Whereby the big banks are driving capital accumulation for the 1% at the expense of the 99%, and may I say, most of the nations of the world also. This situation has been politically promoted since the 1970s by bipartisan consensus support from both Democrats and the Republicans. The Great Depression was largely caused by the fact that Wall Street was not regulated, allowing massive speculation during the Roaring Twenties. After the Roosevelt administration passed the 1932 Glass-Steagall Act and the Securities Act of 1933, Wall Street was held in check into the 1970s. However, beginning in the late 1970s, the Carter administration initiated steps to deregulate Wall Street. Since each administration, regardless of whichever party was in power, has been in complicity with Wall Street. The most egregious administration was Bill Clinton's. This is because in 1999 he signed the Orwellian sounding Financial Services Modernization Act, which repealed Glass-Steagall, 
therefore completely deregulating the commercial and securities banks. This allowed the banks to pursue hyper-speculation directly leading to the ongoing exponential income and wealth inequalities, as well as the 2000 dot-com crash and the financial crash in 2008. Nevertheless, rather than putting firm reins on the banks, nevertheless, rather than putting firm reins on the banks after the 2008 crash, the Bush Obama administration bailed the Wall Street, bailed out Wall Street to the tune of 5.7 trillion, while also carrying out massive tax cuts and severe austerity policies, policies which has developed much.